Hello, welcome to Anchat. My name is Chris Murrow. On today's show, I'll be talking about my Formica Brigandi colony. Uh, basically, they are, they are uh, social parasites, but queens have to start nests in a very specific way. Um, so, adult colonies actually do uh, little like raids on uh, host uh, species in order to get workers. Uh, new queens don't have that luxury because they don't have any workers yet. So, in order for the uh, colony to start up, they have to infiltrate a uh, colony or otherwise, uh, you know, steal brood and. Uh, uh, you know, if there is a resident queen of the host species, uh, she needs to get killed at uh, some point <coughs> and uh, replaced by uh, you know the former Capragandi queen. So two years ago, I came across a former Capragandi queen. I did exactly as I described. Basically, I put her inside a test tube setup. Uh, I gave her uh, cocoons to a, um, a host species. In this case, Formica palatifolva and Formica inserta. Those are the two most common in my uh, yard, so I went with those. And uh, success! We had a queen uh, that uh, you know, now has workers. Um, I caught her in August, so she didn't even bother to lay eggs over the winter. Formica, in general, do not keep eggs, uh, or any sort of brood for that matter, over the winter time. So it's it's kind of a strategy uh, that they kind of use. Now, I have a uh, Formica palatifolva queen, which I also uh, caught and started uh, rearing in captivity. And uh, she started laying again in uh, around... April, I want to say, and then the Formica Pregandi queen started laying her eggs in um, May, so it was kind of a late start. I assume that's to give their host uh, species um, just, you know, a fighting chance uh, at uh, starting up, um, you know, so that way when their workers get born, they'll have something to raid out of the other nest. So that makes uh, perfect sense in my mind. Now, this first year, I'm actually told in con you know, by other people who do this that uh, it actually takes a while for these colonies to start up. So here we have a picture of um, basically what the nest looks like today, and uh, there is a video coming up, but I need to explain a certain point. Um, for the longest time, the Formica Pregandi queen wasn't, uh, like, none of her brood was actually reaching adulthood. Uh, I'd see uh, eggs, I'd see larvae, I'd see pupa, and then I'd see the Formica palatifolva workers that were in there kind of uh, not really cleaning the pupa, but like being really rough with them, like almost tearing them apart or something, like there was something wrong. And eventually we did get this really small cast born. We got like, I have uh, maybe three of those inside the colony right now, these really, really tiny uh, ants uh, for the uh, Formica brigandi species. and. It really raises questions as to what the hell this uh, cast is for, because they're certainly not raiding a colony from something, you know, with you know, workers the size of this. You know, it's, it's not. It doesn't make uh, sense. So, but once those first three uh, were born, it seemed like everything uh, took a turn for the better. Uh, I also decided, you know, what the hey, let me just boost them now, because I was thinking like. At this point, outside in nature, they would probably would be, uh, you know, they, they, you know, they wouldn't be able to boost anything. You know, they've overwintered. They're, you know, where are these eggs coming from inside the Formica colony, unless the workers lay them and produce males or something? Um, so it raises uh, some questions as to how these start, you know, uh, as of you know year two. But we've gotten past that point. I did uh, boost the colony with Formica palatifolva, and it seemed like once the uh, the host species had issues. Uh, telling their brood to uh, their host species apart, or similar species, I, I indiscriminately put uh, Inserta and Palatifolva in this colony. Uh, it seemed like once they did had a choice between Palatifolva, Inserta, and uh, Pregandi, and, uh, you know, they, they just, they stopped, um, I, I guess, murdering the uh, newborns. So that was an interesting thing, and uh, the Formica Pregandi were very quick to, uh, like, you know, this is her most recent batch of workers here, and she has stopped laying. Uh, so we do have a uh, more normal sized, I'd say at least the smallest cast anyway. Formica Pregandi workers are typically the same size as their host, if not slightly bigger. So we're getting to, you know, more correct sizes. Now, here we have a video, and uh, I had to, um... The trouble with keeping these ants is I always want them to be visual, so I can't really move them to any sort of a setup. And uh, you can kind of see, you can kind of tell the difference between host and uh, parasite here. From Capragandi being the uh, sort of more red and brightly colored ones, and uh, Inserta and Palatifolva being more um, uh, brass or uh, you know a duller color. They also move slightly differently. There, you know, the host species actually do work. <laughs> and uh, here I'm in the process of uh, moving them from one tube to the next because this is their original tube and it was running out of water, so you need to do that. So what I did was, you know, they're not really foraging at this time, so I uh, just taped a uh, clean tube with a fresh water supply to it, 
Uh, when you do that, always leave a small gap. Not so the ants can get out, but um, if there isn't a gap, you'll get nothing but condensation just forming everywhere in the tube. Uh, so you need a small vent hole, and you know, regular scotch tape works. And you can see there are, you know, still workers being born here. Uh, yeah, but like you can see the difference in uh, cast size. It is really hard to imagine what this smaller cast would actually do. Like maybe if the host uh, died out or something, which they, uh, you know, I got like three workers of the host species uh, die, but you know, she has like maybe what 15 or so, you know, in here. Perhaps uh, the uh, really small cast of the uh, parasite species is capable of doing some sort of nurse work or food gathering at the very least, but um. I'm not entirely sure what their purpose is, and I was really, uh, it was weird, because I found those inside of a wild colony, and I said, wait, 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 what, what is this? <laughs> you know, like, th these ants are not supposed to do work, they're supposed to be lazy and, you know, hell-bent on just, you know, going out, raiding other host colonies that are, you know, do not have a parasite resident, and just stealing, uh, brood. Um, so it's it's really uh, neat to get a colony like this going because I can basically take any sort of uh, host species, uh, uh, as far as brood goes anyway, and just put it into this colony, and you, you know, I would say most of the time they're going to be acceptable. Now at, later on, I did have to uh, you know you do want to get rid of the uh, older tube because they need the forage in some way, and you know my test tubes are long enough that uh, it creates an issue, and I always keep mine at a slight angle. Um, I forget the reason why I do that. Actually, it's more it's more really just to get the tube, prevent the tube from rolling around inside there. Create just like a little berm and stuff, I can actually tilt it to one side and it'll, instead of really, you know, rolling over half the colony and scaring the hell out of everyone, it'll just, you know, slide slightly to one side. So I, I always do that with a little wad of modeling clay. Uh, the queen, at the very least, is incredibly skittish. You can see she's outside of the, uh, nest there. And, uh, they're not really sold on this idea of a new test tube. They like the old test tube. So, uh, but you do have to force colonies to do, uh, things sometimes in captivity. You see there's a, uh, small worker and a, uh, normal-sized worker there actually getting okay shots here. And, uh, I have to apologize for the slightly yellow, uh, haze over the, uh, uh, the entire video portion of this. I was not, uh, I didn't think to use a flashlight and just highlight things. I need to change the bulb or something that I'm using, because it just, uh, I don't think I can edit in my, uh, software, but anyway, um, you know, these, this is not the ac you know, the completely correct color of, uh, ants in here. So, we do have, uh, this happening here, and eventually when a colony, uh, you know, moves into a new nest and, or gets spilled into a new area, you start seeing, uh, interesting behavior that, you know, it's, it's encouraging to the owner. You can see an ant here, you know, getting dragged into the, uh, into the nest, a little unwillingly. I'm trying to see, is that a... yeah, that's a host species there. So we have, uh, workers getting dragged in here. You can see the queen still off in the corner in the distance. Yeah, if they were doing stuff like this, uh, constantly, I think I, I feel like I could just watch them for hours, so... And here they, uh, a worker actually just dragged the queen along the, uh, wall here, and, uh, I was a little late to hit record. But, you see, you know, even she's getting, uh, pulled inside. And they just, uh, they go around the entire cage and just do this to all of them. Now, I do have a host colony of this, uh, up and running. I'm tempted to, um, sometime in the future give the c two colonies access to the same foraging area and see if I could uh, witness some sort of raiding behavior between the uh, the host species and the non. Because I feel like that would be really, really cool to watch. At the same time, though, I don't want to kill off the uh, my host species that I have in captivity. You know, I have plenty of colonies out in my yard. I can just steal from them. But, it, it, I, I, you know, I feel like they wouldn't be... Uh, like, this colony would not be complete without, uh, that, so hopefully they survive this, uh, winter and, uh, I get, uh, colonies up and running and we'll be able to do something like that next, you know, sometime next year, probably June, July-ish. So here's the, uh, host colony I have here, and it's, uh, yeah, it's still young. 
find Formica to be a little slow to start. This whole uh, not keeping brood over the winter thing is really, really a problem. And I'm filming them like this just to uh, attempt at some sort of comparison. You can see um, the Formica per yeah, the Formica palatifolva workers from a young colony are about the same size as the smallest workers of the palatifolva. The difference here is palatifolva was much quicker to uh, get to uh, yeah get the uh, regular workers. Uh, yeah, to get larger workers than the uh, the host species would have. So, that's about uh, all I have to show you. I've been Chris Murrow, and this has been uh, a look at uh, my Formica for Gandhi Colony. Uh, thank you for watching, and of course I have a blog, uh, antsbeesbutterfliesnature.blogspot.com. Um, thank you for watching, and goodbye.